Today I'm going to try and explain to you the balance of payments. It's another flip lesson from yours truly, Mr. Mike. Arguably, the balance of payments is the most important international economic indicator that we will study this year. Simply put, it's the financial relationship between Australia and the rest of the world. What it does, it summarises all the transactions in and out of Australia, every currency transaction between us and the rest of the world. Okay, there are two sections that we talk about. One is called the current account, which I'll explain more in a moment. Another one, which balances all, all the um, financial transactions coming into Australia, is the capital and financial account. Now, the first thing to realise with the current account, they are looking at transactions which are not reversible. For example, if I pay interest, that's a one-way thing. If I receive dividends, that's a one-way thing. So. Um, also, when we talk about um, uh, transactions, money that comes into Australia, we, de we determine those as credits, they're the good things, and money going out of Australia, we call them debits. Okay? The thing that um, I have to say about the current account straight away, straight away is that the current account is, has always been in credit, at least for the last 30 years, and it's also called CAD, Current Account Deficit for short. Let's look at these components. Then the first bit, net goods of exports minus imports of goods. It's fairly straightforward. Um, we also have net services. Um, so we're talking about things like tourism and education, for example. All right? So not only do we have uh, imports and exports of goods, but we also have a separate one from services. Now, the balance of goods and services, yes, both of those two added together. Another very important um, section is what we call net primary income. And essentially the big ticket items on, on this particular section are, is the interest on foreign loans and dividends and other sort of one-way transactions that are paid to and from Australia. But as you'll find out, um, the interest on foreign loans is by way the, the biggest um, impact, or the biggest impact item, and that's why generally the current account as a whole is always as a negative. Net secondary income, we're talking about foreign pensions, aid payments, and amongst other things. Again, they're one way or non reversible transactions. And as you'll see here, um, there's a number of mathematical, mathematical relationships, if you like. Net goods plus net services equals balances on goods and services, as I've already said. But when we add the net primary income and the net secondary income to that, we get the balance on current account. And as I was indicating to you earlier, um, that the net primary income makes up a whole lot of um, interest payable on foreign loans and Australia has got uh, billions and billions of those. Um, that means that our balance and current account is always in deficit, had, hence the term CAD. Now the other side of the story is the capital financial account. Right? So here we're talking about reversible transactions, things like loans and investments. So for example, if a a foreign bank makes a loan to Australia, they obviously expect to have that loan paid back plus interest. Similarly, if they make an investment in Australia, they uh, put their hard-earned cash into Australia. It can be a piece of real estate, it can be a set of shares, it um, can be a, a company, um, anything like that. And they expect to get profits and dividends as a return. So, um, But obviously once they sell their investments or realise back their loans, then they will get that money back and hence it's called a reversible transaction. Again, the same money coming into Australia is credit, and money going out of Australia is a debit. Um, <clears throat> in order to balance our books, the balance of payments, um, the capital and financial account is always in credit, uh, and that effectively makes up the deficit um, for the current account. So if we have a current account deficit, which is largely in a minus, we need a capital account in a positive. Now let me summarise that using this flow chart. The overall balance of balance payments account must equal zero. So the balance in the current account, we've got net goods plus net services, giving us um, uh, the balance on goods and services, plus net primary income, plus secondary income. Right? That's on one side. The non-reversible transaction must be balanced by the balance on the capital account, either reversible transactions, and here we're talking about transfers, um, we're talking about our loans, 
investments and so forth. Now let's have a look at some current data. This is really important. This is the latest data as you can see as at the uh, uh, March 2013. I'm going to be looking at the raw data, the trend estimates. You can see here that our current account um, has actually gone down. Okay, we're in, the, we're in minus 12.8 billion there, now we're only 12.2 billion. You've got to realise that's just for one quarter. That's how much um, Australia, in, in, in a sense, has overspent. Um, so we've got more imports. No, the bigger part, this is the whole lot. Um, when we look at the balance of goods and services, uh, we've had more imports than exports. So that's what that means. And the net prime income, we've had 8.8. .8 five seven um, billion dollars going out of the country um, and as I said earlier that is mainly composed of the foreign debt interest that we pay. If we turn attention to the graph down here you can see the uh, grey line here here we are in the positive that's good was where we are earning uh, more on exports than we are paying for imports when it goes below the zero line obviously we have a deficit on uh, net goods and services you can see that um, the net primary income this down down here is the interest that we pay on our foreign loans is always way in the negative and later on I'll explain to you how that's happened historically over here um, this is where we talk about all that money I was talking about that we owe to other countries and if we're only talking about foreign debt, the net foreign debt. Okay, Equity is in terms of the share market investments um, and this dotted line is the net foreign debt. So currently the country, um, excluding the government, owes $750 billion uh, to outside institutions around the world. That's quite mind-boggling. And that as a percentage of GDP is quite high, which I'll explore in a moment. Let's have a look at some of the export volumes. You can you can see that resources have been really gunning it, really quite well. Um, but as you know about China, that's sort of tapering off. That it hasn't really been reflected yet on this graph. Services, we're talking about uh, mainly education and tourism. That's been hit by the Australian dollar, as has manufacturing in the light blue line, as you can see here. But the rural exports have have taken a bit of a hit up, and that's from a low base. Um, from we had droughts and also we had the winds in Queensland and so forth, but uh, rural exports have taken off a bit. Let's have a look at the current account deficit as a uh, percent of nominal GDP. Let's just take the, uh, the the two main sections of the current account. First of all, the trade balance. Okay, I think I showed you this before. When we've got um, this orange line above zero it means that we've got a positive um, export performance and when it's below um, our imports are always more than our exports so really we're overspending that's what that says and that accumulator over the years has um, caused this green line okay so this is just a history of consistently overspending and um, this is the amount of money that we owe um, but this is only as a proportion of GDP, right? So you can say over the last um, 20 years, the problem hasn't got any worse. It got worse down here, but it's sort of more or less at pre-1993 levels, right? As a proportion of GDP. So the, the level of loans are going up, but as a proportion of GDP, they've more or less held the same. And this blue line is the current account balance, which is, which is a combination of both the... Um, orange and the green line. Here's another graph on the foreign liabilities, what I showed you uh, before, which is very the same. Okay, you've got equity, um, you've got debt, and total debt. But this is not shown in terms of um, net amounts outstanding, but this is more as a proportion of GDP. So, another way of putting it, that current level of net foreign debt is, you can see, I'd say it was about um, over about 50% of our total gross domestic product which is high and you can see it has risen over the last 20 years so it's large. Our debt as a proportion of our um, GDP seems to be getting bigger. 
Now this is the last slide I wanted to show you, um, and this is the historical um, performance of our current account deficit. Okay, you can see back here in the 80s it, it generally got worse, and what got worse is this dark green line. Okay, you can see here back in the 70s it were, we had some positive performances, so that meant that um, we were had a current account. Uh, surplus. And the last time we had that was about 1975 and since then um, performance has been steadily going downhill but you can argue since about the, the, the mid 80s uh, the, you know, we've been consistently at that level so we haven't got any worse if we, if we take note of this trend line and you can see here that we're currently working above the trend line okay and you can attribute that basically to the amount of um, resources that we've been selling to the Asian countries. Interestingly, uh, since the 1960s we've always been a payer of foreign debt interest and that's what this um, black line indicates. Okay, So we've always been uh, borrowing heavily um, ever, even since the 60s. But borrowing isn't always bad um, if, it's, if it's put towards good infrastructure projects and, and good um, research and development for companies and so forth um, and other projects, mining projects and so forth. It means that um, as long as we increase our productive capacity, in one sense it doesn't really matter where the money comes from but there's obviously implications when exchange rates and so forth change. So I'm hoping that's been useful to you. Um, this is just one snapshot of the current account, um, the balance of payments. Um, we'll be doing lots of other um, exercises and reinforcement relating to it. We'll be doing plenty of mathematical exercises and so forth. And the other obvious step to, to do is to look at um, the impact of having a high current account deficit and also what the country can do to solve it. But that's for another lesson. Thanks for listening.